welcome everyone to another episode of our end time bible study and as usual we want to remind you that every information that we are sharing use it for your own study and if you have any doubts please do let us know always always we are ready to answer you anyway we are looking into signs of the times part 43 so last time we were discussing about sixth bowl and what all things are happening and we were looking at the three spirits that are demonic that is coming out of the mouth of the false prophet the dragon and the antichrist and so now keeping with that we were discussing about how things will progress so the world's armies are basically gathering or being prepared to gather at a certain point they all end up working with the dragon the antichrist and the false prophet so what's happening so if river euphrates has dried up and it says it is making way for the kings of the east so it's more than one king crossing over into crossing over the river euphrates to come to where that is where we're discussing today preparation of this climatic war begins with the sixth bowl judgment so basically god is preparing this war it's not the evil forces that are in control it is actually god is in control and what happens is now as these people what is causing them to you know gather here is these three demonic spirits that is proceeding forth from the dragon the antichrist and the false prophet and john records them to be you know looking like frogs so we saw last time that in current world scenario the only thing that matches all the clues together or the facts together is our gray alien and how the chances are how this will progress is you know what causes these people to gather what are they thinking in their heads we wouldn't take up swords or guns against christ but something is causing these people to gather to fight against christ so possible scenario that this is going to play out is see the world has gone through all sorts of things you had the seven seals you've had the seven trumpets finished so the world is in absolute turmoil and in between all of this you had the two witnesses as well causing havoc so in all possibilities these people or these creatures will come blaming god for the catastrophes but god will be portrayed as an another invading alien race they say they are responsible for all of this and that is why we are here to help you so those uh, attacks were all remote now they are coming personally to you know take over the world so just like a sci-fi movie and these creatures are supposedly going to show signs that will convince the world of who they are or whatever they are so much so that they would want to join them so they could be performing these things to provide relief to the world imagine you have been battered you've been bruised you know the good samaritan kind of story unfortunately the good samaritan here is a bad guy he wants to help you out there's food shortages water shortages you wouldn't be able to stand if there was another invasion so they are here to help and i'm thinking that my guess is that they are going to use their technologies or their ability to you know counter the situation to convince the world to gather with them against jesus mind you we've had all the angels falling down here on earth they've been cast out of heaven now they have no place to go so this is the next option that's coming through so now we see this this is the possibility that they're going to help us you know get over our situation or how god is judging the world well i posted a small it's something that is you know giving going to give you a better overview of what we've been discussing about it is there on netflix i don't know if it's there on any other channel they have put it in the chat so it'll help us get a nice overview at Not least a- they've opened it up governments have opened it up as a fact instead of fiction which was what was up until now yeah so until say recently it was all covered up so now they are slowly opening it up so you can question why they are opening it up now you know it's all timing it also talks about how information about the ufos were slowly released into the public through movies and how movies affected the way they wanted us to see the world information is power and with power they can control you that's basically the point okay so moving forward now comes in cricket terms the googly i want you to look at revelation chapter 16 verse 15 to 16 if you see this verse it says this behold i am coming as a thief blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked and they see his shame and they gathered them together to the place 
called in Hebrew Armageddon. Question, who is Jesus talking to here? No takers? His disciples or his followers? How can he be talking to this? It's only John that is witnessing this. This is for his disciples, no? Yeah, basically, is it the thing is, is it for the church? Yes or no? Yes, it is. So now, any doubts whether on who is the recipient of this message? Recipient is John, but it's meant for the church. Exactly. Okay. Now, it, now, everybody else doubt that this is for the church? So, if Jesus is talking to the church, then the next question is, what garments is he referring to? A robe of righteousness. Again, it's very clear what robe of righteousness. Okay, very good. So now, this passage of scripture has largely been ignored. You know, you have whole doctrines being formulated without keeping in mind what this verse is actually telling you. So what all doctrines are getting affected? Come on, you guys have been enough just to know which one is being affected. Pre-tribulation rapture. Is it pre-tribulation? So pre-tribulation is the rapture doctrine. Yes. So it, it does get affected. There's something else that is attached also to it gets affected. It's the second coming. Can it, doctor, can it be compared to the ten virgins with the lamb? 100%. Five of them with... 100%. It can be. I wanted, I I didn't want to take it right now, but um, Achu, can we have that uh, portion? I want you to look at it very carefully. I recently spoke this to a few people recently, and I will show you something that mostly, again, people have ignored. Matthew 25, 1 onwards. So we'll read it together. Okay, everybody can see it? Yes. Okay, look at the first part. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Okay. So, who does the ten virgins allude to? Those who wait upon the Lord. So, that is again church, right? Yes. So, now we know that they all have lamps, they have oil, and they go out with expectation to meet whom? The bridegroom. So, who's the bridegroom? Jesus. Okay. So, now you have three things coming out with expectation. They all have oil, okay, and they have lamps, and then finally they have expectation to meet the bridegroom. So, we know who they are. Fine. Now, Jesus says five of them were wise and five were foolish. Great. And those who are foolish, now he's telling why they're foolish. Those who are foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So the wise ones had oil in their inside the lamps and extra oil with them. With them. The other one did not plan for anything else. They just had enough oil inside one lamp. That's it. They didn't take extra. Mm -hmm. So these are the things that you should think about. What all is going on? Then it says what? The bridegroom was? Delayed. Delayed. So unexpected. So usually during weddings, it takes place between 10 and 12 o'clock. It does not go beyond 12 o'clock. So you should know Jewish wedding rituals and how they proceed. It's between 10 and 12. Now they were expecting him to be there early. So they came and sat there before 10 o'clock, hoping that he will come. But 10 finished, 11 finished, and it's almost 12 now. That's why the delayed portion is there. And while they were delayed, what happened to all these believers? All these people? Please underline this portion. They all slept. They all slumbered and slept. So are they watchful Christians or watchful believers? No. no. Absolutely mm. not. Okay. The, this is why the Laodicean church example is there. All lazy fellows went to sleep. They are not actually Luke. watching. Lukewarm? They are all lukewarm, technically, but little smart. Some people are a little more smarter than the others. That's all. Okay. <laughs> Equally, all are bad. They all slumbered and slept. That's why Paul many times, awake to righteousness, come out of your sleep and slumber. The whole church thinks that they are some great God's gift to mankind, but they are not. Jesus. Okay. We are all weak. We all have our problems. We all have our follies and that's why it's very clearly saying they all slumbered and slept now you tell me are they wise or foolish foolish they are all foolish the only wise thing that these people did was a carry extra oil that's it there's nothing else intelligent or smart about them that too only five carried with them only five so half so just say church 100% sleeping you know they're mindful of some things Mental, half the church is not mindful yes. not not prepared at midnight now it is 12 o'clock Okay. A cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Now, suddenly, everybody is scampering. You know, I used to see in India back, the Jesus coming soon. Everybody looked busy. 
you know some people write uh, my this car is a gift of god this is another one i saw jesus coming soon everybody look busy now everybody is getting busy he is coming right so he'll think that we are all busy doing god's work now suddenly they all have time enough they all scamper around they trim their wigs because it's now black and now they put oil there and the foolish said to the wise give us some of your oil for our lamps are going out did the bridegroom come immediately after this call no again he is not there yet and then the wise are saying no lest we also should not have enough that means the extra that they carried they have poured into their thing and they have some remaining still and they are unwilling to share why are they unwilling to share because then if the bridegroom it's delayed then they won't have oil for their lamp so he is still not there yet and they are expecting him to get further delayed yes yes this is this what we are taught yes wait patiently for the lord no 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 at what point is this happening this is past the time of expectation yes But even then and then mm-hmm. there, there there is the call so we all are taught with the shout of a archangel the you know the lord will descend everybody will hear all will be ready yes okay yes the shout has come and he still not reached okay yes or no yes and then these five virgins they find enough time to go run get oil market is still open for somehow i don't even know how market is open at 12 o'clock they go run get the oil but by the time they came unfortunately the lord had already come yes so now imagine it is not what we are thinking if it was pre tribulation they wouldn't have this difficulty there they would have nobody would have time to sleep everybody is done gone if it was mid still it can be explained because the oil is almost finished everybody is past the time and now they are coming here we think we are prepared but always remember you need extra oil i have a question yep so what is oil mean in this case this perseverance yeah here it can be only faith so why would the other virgin say can you give me some of your faith it is it is it is what he say it's like an allegory you know you don't have enough to carry you forward go get some more understanding and come back basically you're not prepared yeah they had some sort of preparation okay but these other five were not at all prepared they were under the under the pretense that he's coming i'm ready you understand yeah but they were not ready but they actually were not ready so the thing is this is nothing to do with rapture or anything else this is this is where the verse comes he who endures till the end will be saved you are today at the very end of the time Sorry, do you ahead. have enough oil to carry you to the end of time not to the beginning we mistakenly put this parable at the beginning that's a problem what i'm understanding is that whatever it takes for you to survive it will take that and then some yeah to survive basically yep. exactly you need to have foresight into what is happening you need to know what the future actually is going to bring forth rather than what you assume that it is bringing forth the church right now is actually sleep mode they have no idea what is coming and, and i think maybe he's also alluding to the fact that it's going to be more difficult than you think it will be yeah that's why jesus said will i truly find faith when i come these people have were lacking their lamps were not enough to keep burning so this verse in chapter 16 actually throws us into a loop because the second coming is affected rapture is affected because it is talking this at the sixth bowl you can't even say pre trib you know you can't say mid trib either can you when we say church it means the whole church is not pieces of church you can't say church is taken and half the church is left here what nonsense because he says blessed is he who watches and keeps his garments lest he walk naked now what does it mean other people claim and see your shame because we claim to be christians and we don't know what is going on and so our weakness our follies are going to get exposed to the world that is what it means here and they who are who are unbelievers will see our shame now he's very emphatic when he says this so watch out where all he says blessed is he you have it in revelation 1 now you have it in revelation 16 also blessed is he who watches now the question comes and by watches he means he sees the knows the times and sees what's happening exactly you need to know what to watch if and you have to come watch. and his garments means he's prepared for whichever weather is coming his way yeah is that what it is yeah because jesus said he who endures till the end will be saved 
and at the same time he also said pray that you be counted worthy to escape all this this so what are we supposed to watch out at this time what is he asking us to watch out for any guesses temptation he said watch and pray that you do not fall into temptation yeah you can say that also anything else watching for his coming very good aunty so whenever we are faced with questions always try to see which verses can i use or what verses is he is he talking about okay so here it is second thessalonians 2 verse 1 to 4 now brethren concerning the coming of our lord jesus christ and our gathering to him very clear what he is talking about here he coming we gathering okay we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled so something is going on and so paul is asking them to not be shaken in your mind or be troubled in your heart either in spirit or by word or by letter whichever news you are receiving whatever format let it not trouble you okay as if from us as though the day of christ had come so imagine this is the first century church they were under the notion that christ is about to come because of what they were suffering through at that point of time i told you the church was under persecution for 300 years almost we cannot cannot minus that from history they were being slaughtered and the the understanding was with the suffering or tribulation comes salvation from god and so they expected him to come at any time so that's how this eminency of his arrival comes this doctrine of eminence eminent return of christ comes because of what the church was going through at that point of time but always remember at that point of time they were under severe persecution they thought it was the tribulation period and therefore that's how you have post millennial doctrine coming through they thought that jesus coming at the end of time and that's when everything will come that's how you have post tribulation doctrine because of what the time was is it clear yes doctor yes you should write this down otherwise you'll forget because these terms is very difficult to remember unless you clearly understand what is going on the church was under persecution that's why he's saying do not be troubled whether in spirit or by word or by letter as if from us what is the news as though the lord had already come had already come that means they thinking they missed the boat let no one deceive you by any means okay let no one underline that again for the day will not come unless the falling away happens first and the man of sin is revealed the son of perdition who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called god or that is worshiped so that he sits as god in the temple of god showing himself that he is god so what are we what is this that day i remember very clearly when we had this session and i took this verse and i said i will come to this for that day what is this what is he implying when he says that day which day is this it's there in the verse the day that christ comes absolutely the day that he comes and we are gathered together to him you want to call it whatever you want to say second coming uh, rapture whatever doesn't matter but look at what he's saying that day will not come unless what these are the things that he is asking us to watch out for because unless we have information what are we supposed to do we can't be blindly walking around even in the darkness you need a torch to see what way to go yeah so god has shined the light but unfortunately we are blind we are not seeing it because we are distracted from you know other other things it's very clear what is telling you i am not making this stuff up um question yeah um so the theory of pre tribulation rapture that's it's out the door if you look at this verse directly here okay. just here it's a little out the door okay and the other verse it's talking about it at the sixth bowl not even first bowl not even first seal or trumpet or anywhere it's at the sixth bowl we are at the at the very end of tribulation period and he's telling them to watch and pray there so you tell me what what we should do can i faithfully teach pre trib or even mid trib no or even post 
<laughs> all three trips are wrong. They got some parts correct, but not not they didn't get it right because they miss out on stuff very clearly. That is what is saying here. What what is saying that day of your gathering and his coming will not happen unless you have first the falling away taking place. Has the falling away taken place? No. Then it says the man of sin is revealed, and how is he revealed? He will exalt himself all that is above. Uh, all that is known as God, whether it is Christian religion, Islamic religion, or uh, Hindu religion, whatever it is, doesn't matter, or anything that is called God, he will rise above all of them, and he will sit in the temple of God. Now here, temple of God, you have two choices. One they say is the Jewish temple, or being rebuilt, or two, there are some who argue that temple that God is talking about is your body. Now, which do you think is this, is the worst? What does it actually mean? Is it your body or is it a, is it an actual temple? Body. No, no. Don't go by this thing. If I say body, how can we say he is exalting himself above all that is called God? Physical it's temple. It's a physical temple, because the statement is telling something else. Because the problem is we choose to believe what we are presented with. And it, it lines with our thought process. We are not using it like a researcher. So when you research, you should keep all your biases aside. Otherwise, your research will go to the same place where it started from. Keep our biases aside. Look at the facts and what all is saying and you put them in order. Here, it is saying the Antichrist will come and sit in the temple. Now, you can't say it's my body. Because all that is known as God, that that doesn't apply to me. And he's and it says he will enforce the mark upon people, great, small, rich, poor, bond or slave. That has nothing to do with body. And we know from the times that they are trying to build a third temple. 100%. It's there all over. It's there everywhere. And yet we want to, you know, make it allegorical. Oh, it might not be that. It is this because it says you are the body. So they are pitting this into their narrative. It's not looking at what the scripture is plainly telling. I don't know why people want to make things allegorical when it is literal. Makes no sense to me. I don't know. You need to have the falling away taking place first. Then I would put into that you need the temple also built because unless the temple is built, he can't sit inside it as God. So therefore, the temple comes second. The third is the man of sin has to come and declare himself as God. So these three things you have to watch out for from this verse. And along with this, there will be other things that you have to watch out for as well. Because you will have the two witnesses there. You will have all these other little, little things happening. I don't think two witnesses are little, but they are major. But these things are part of the stuff that you are supposed to watch out for. Because the scripture very clearly is telling for that day, and it says, what is that day? The concerning of coming of our Lord Jesus and our gathering to him. Period. It cannot happen unless these, at least these three things taking place. Or can we preach pre truth? I don't have no idea. Then that means the whole Bible is you know, it's upside down. At this time, I don't know of any church that is watching out for these three things. Yet they are supposed to be waiting for Jesus coming. Does it make sense? I would liken this to the Five who didn't have oil. This is the actual condition of our congregations. We don't know what to watch out for. We all think he will. I'll hear the voice and we are all gone. That's it. This other stuff than all is missing. Okay. So all gathering at where now the now the next fun part in the same verse Revelation chapter sixteen verse sixteen. Next slide, Achu. What are we supposed to watch out for? Is fun. It's finished. That was the previous slide. Yeah. So they gathered them together at the place in Hebrew. It's called Armageddon. So as uncle was earlier trying to uh, tell us, Armageddon is actually two words together. Har means mountain and Megiddo, Megiddon. They say is the valley of Jezreel or the valley of Megiddo. This is where a lot of wars took place in this place. Now the problem with this, there is no mountain in Megiddo. That's the biggest problem with this verse. Can you, I put the picture there. So that is supposed to be Megiddo. Is there a mountain on this picture? Unless we misunderstood what a mountain looks like. Do you see a mountain on this picture? There is no mountain or hill there. 
And is it yes. the belly of Megiddo? Agreed. But that cannot be Har Megiddo then. Because you, wars are not usually fought in the mountains, it's fought in the valleys. No, no, no. What, see, that's where the thing is. This is where the problem comes. Now we are trying to justify. I understood the same problem. I had the same problem. When I taught this, I taught this very same thing, uncle. I don't know. At that time also, I had no peace regarding this teaching, but I taught it because I couldn't refute it. I had nothing to disprove what was already there. So I understood the value of Megiddo myself because even Napoleon came here and said all the all the armies of the world can gather here and fight. But when it's a valley of Jezreel, why would you have Har Megiddo there? What is John trying to tell? There is no mountain there. How can you have the word Armageddon if there is no mountain there? If it is a valley, there is a different word altogether. Why would you say Mount Megiddo? Is there something to be conquered? There is nothing to conquer there, uncle. Because oh, the no. we have there, I have the next picture for you. What they are calling or they suggest that is a mountain is actually a tell. Now, what is a tell? It is a man-made mount. You know, you build your settlement on top of it. It's not a mountain. You can't call it a mountain. It's a tell. So, settlement after settlement on top of each other, it was built. And finally, it became a little bit raised up. That's it. It's not a hill, neither a mountain. So, therefore, it is not that. Because there are other verses that makes no sense. Because remember, Jesus, when he has the fight with his army, it says the blood will rise to the bridle of the horse. In such a valley, you cannot have that. There's nothing to hold the blood to that it rises up to the horse's nose. I'm saying, yet I taught it. So I can understand very well when people are teaching, even though their mind doesn't agree with it, they will still go with the flow of the teaching. Because they don't have information to disprove it. Now, that's the problem that happens. I face the same problem and I'm telling you straightforward. Now, you know, we have this, thank God for people who are studying languages. Or they have the ability to read and understand what it is actually saying. And they have independent thought. I thank God for these people. Anyway, in 1938, a man named Charles C. Torrey. Okay, he is a Semitic scholar. Okay, but he is biblically based. Noticed a translation problem with this Armageddon. And he said, how can the Bible refer to a mount that does not exist? So then he dug deeper and he found that the term comes from Hebrew actually. the Those who were writing it into Greek did not transliterate it properly. So they looked at the word there doesn't have an equivalent in Greek. So they just substituted what was the closest. The problem with what is the closest, it actually points to a different direction. And that's how you have Armageddon there. So he came and he understood that this problem is existing and he looked through scripture what it could be that they're actually referring to. He came out with the or suggestion that it is not our Megiddo. The word Megiddo has been mistranslated. It is Har Moed. Har Moed is the mount of assembly or mount of congregation. Has this word been seen anywhere else in scripture? Mount of congregation or mount of assembly? Is it where they gave the Ten Commandments? Yeah, actually, it alludes to that. <laughs> that is the allusion. You will see that in the next slide. Satan has always been wanting whatever belongs to God. Okay. And you will see this verse coming up in Isaiah 14, verse 13. Look at that. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also on the mount of the congregation. That is Har Moed, on the farthest sides of the north. This is what... The scripture is alluding to having what Satan confessed or we say here that he had pride in his heart. He wanted it to uh, e be equal to God and therefore he did this. And so the mount of the congregation. Do you know what mount is he talking to? Talking about which is the mount of congregation? Is it Mount Sinai? Uh, that would be the one that physically was here but not the one alluded to. Mount Sinai was the initial one. But what is the actual mountain? That it's referring to. In future, which mountain will fit the mountain of congregation? It's Zion. Don't you remember? Is Mount Zion the city of the great king on the sides of the north? Isn't that the psalm? Yep. Or is it also the mountain on which Jesus ascended to heaven? No, that's Olive. Mount of Olives, yeah. Yeah, that's not Mount, mount of Olives is not the Mount of Congregation. But the Bible is cleaning you very clearly what is where it is. It is Mount Zion because is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king? Isn't that the verse? It is Psalm 48, verse 2. Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth, 
is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. That's the verse. Psalm chapter 48, verse 2. Is this in the next slide? No, I didn't have it. Okay. Actually, you know what? Some of the stuff that I'm teaching you, I'm getting it as I'm teaching you. Okay. That's why I did some of them. I don't have slides. As we are discussing, it comes and then I, I just say it. Satan wants Mount Zion. And why is uh, Jesus landing on Mount Olives? Because right opposite Mount Zion. Because he said he will come there. Why is he coming there and not on Mount Zion? Because Mount Zion is under occupation. Who is occupying it? Antichrist. Exactly. Doctor, Mount Olive is just opposite the Church of Jerusalem. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's technically opposite side of, I would say, uh, northwest of uh, Zion. Yes. So then, now came the this thing. Until I didn't, I didn't actually make sense. Why would the armies gather? We were thinking against Israel. That is why they're crossing Euphrates. No, that's not what is happening. It's actually they are coming to fight for the Antichrist against Christ. Because the battle scene is in Jerusalem. Now that makes a whole lot of sense now. Because we saw that is Jerusalem is could be the great city or Babylon. Because the temple is there. He is sitting in the temple. Now, I even said in one of the class, I, I just haven't figured out why these people are attacking Israel if he is already there as king. Now it makes sense for me. He is asking them to aid, have aid or give him aid and they are coming to aid the Antichrist against Christ and the battlefield is Jerusalem and immediate vicinity. That's why Jesus landing on Mount Olives and it splits the whole thing. I'll come to that. We'll come to that. So basically he is coming to fight against the Antichrist. And now this is proved now. I'll show you the next verse and we'll close. Zechariah chapter 14 verse 1 to 3 and then 5 uh, verse 5 and last portion of 5. Behold the day of the Lord is coming and your spoil will be divided in your midst. For I will gather, underline all these things, for I will gather all the nations to battle against Jerusalem. The city shall be taken, houses rifled, the women ravished. So this already happened part. Okay. Half the city shall go into captivity, but the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then the Lord, then, then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as he fights in the day of battle. Thus the Lord my God will come and all the saints with him. This is in Zechariah. Has it happened? Has anywhere in scripture where the Lord has come with all his saints? Actually, the word saints yes. is holy ones. Don't think it is. Not uh, yet. Huh? Not yet. It's not happened. So he is talking about what? He's talking about Armageddon or Har Moed battle. Battle of Har Moed or battle for the Mount of Congregation. You see how translation makes a big difference in doctrines. It can go either, even a one degree change will go to some other place altogether. Now when you align things together, this is why when you study the scripture, it should agree with all of scripture. If it is not, then we need to Note those things which is not aligning with all of scripture and make a point to see why is it going wrong. I had a tough time teaching about Armageddon because it didn't make sense to me. There was no mountain there. Now it makes sense because other verses are now in agreement with what is it saying. So I was thinking here yeah, the battle will be in, in Valley of Jezreel and then he will come to Jerusalem to like he passes Jerusalem to go to Megiddo and then he comes back. So the armies are not attacking Israel. They have already taken Israel. That's how the Antichrist rules there. But now Christ is coming to free it from them. And then the Antichrist will call everybody to gather to help him fight him. So these other things are happening. So in bowl number six, technically things are moving in such a way that he's already ruling in Jerusalem. And then he knows that he's coming. And therefore he gathers the world together through these spirits to fight against. And that is how he's think, seeing it. From God's perspective, it says... I am going to gather them together for the great feast. Feast for whom? For the wild animals and for the birds. It says he is going to prepare a feast in the wilderness for these creatures. So he on the other side is telling all this is I am allowing it so that they will flow like this. Then I will come and deliver Israel. That's what from both perspectives. 
the problem with us, we are looking at both perspective and confused. So we make our own perspective. So I'll continue with this next week. I know this is not what you have learned. So there's stuff that you will have to look for yourself. I'm not saying take it for face value. Read it. Read it through. See if it makes sense to you. I'm going to give you information, but it is your duty to make sure that it aligns with scripture. I have done my side. Now you have to be convinced. So you do your own study. I'm just going to show you the directions. And you see what the other people are teaching and you see what the Bible is very clearly telling you. Don't get sidetracked. Stick with scripture. Don't do anything else. No questions, then we'll close. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you and praise you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. Lord, all these things, Lord, we have not uh, actually seen or even may have even heard of. But Lord, thank you, Father, Lord, for opening our, our eyes to see it. And I pray, Lord, that the word will uh, do its work, O oh, Father God. I believe very clearly, Lord, that the word itself does its own work, O oh, Father God. It agrees with what you have said. And I just pray, Lord, that your grace will give us the ability to, Lord, discern scripture, O oh, Father God. Let it answer itself, O oh, Father God. I pray, Lord, that your grace will be upon everyone who's here, Lord. May they spend time in your word, Father God, looking into it. And Lord, assessing it for themselves, Father God. And I pray, Father God, that your mighty hand will bless all of us, Father God, even as we do it. And I pray, Lord, that your grace will be resting and abiding with each and every one of us, Father God. Lord, help us to gather again at your appointed time, Father God, submitting all plans and purpose into your hands, Father God. Thank you once again for this time. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank and pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.